Okay, so we've covered the case now where we need to convert the design requirements to catalog data, but only where reliability is constant at 90%. Now we need to dig into this a little bit more and understand this reliability issue. So in many cases we need a reliability value that's different from 90%. In many cases we want something that's much larger than 90%. Maybe we want 99% uh, reliability value. Or maybe we want Six Sigma reliability, which corresponds to 99.99966% reliability. So we're going to go through uh, an approach for converting between 90% uh, reliability and other values of reliability and also incorporate uh, ways of changing between different values of force and life too. So the first thing we need to do to understand how to convert between reliability values is to know well what distribution, what probability distribution accurately represents the failure of bearings. And it turns out that it's the Weibull distribution that accurately represents the failure of bearings. Not only bearings, but also many other mechanical components are accurately modeled by this distribution. So down here, this horizontal axis x, that is the non-dimensional life. So I define x as life in revolutions divided by the L10 value, usually 10 to the 6. So we non-dimensionalize life using the L10 value. And then the vertical axis, that's the frequency of failure. And this value down here of x naught, that's the minimum guaranteed life value in uh, non-dimensional terms. So in other words, we don't have any failures below x naught. And there are a number of parameters also that help describe this distribution. But before I get into those, uh, I'm just going to write out the formula for the distribution. Like the Gaussian distribution, it involves an exponential, but you can see this is quite a bit different from the normal distribution. It, uh, is, it usually is skewed. So reliability as a function of non-dimensional life is equal to the exponential of this quantity. So we have x minus x naught, how far away we are from the minimum uh, guaranteed life, divided by theta minus x naught. Theta is one of the new parameters, all raised to the power of b. Now, b is a shape parameter. You can see here in the Weibull distribution, we have three different Weibull distributions that all with, with a different value of b. So if b is less than 1, it's very heavily skewed to the left. So if you think of this in terms of failure, this means that we have lots of failures early in life. And then as we increase b, it starts to skew the distribution more to the right. So if we have a larger value for b, then we have many more bearings that fail later in life. And obviously that's a more desirable property. So theta, that is what we call either a characteristic or a scale value. It's used in conjunction with this non-dimensional life, so you can think of it uh, as a, a life value. And then beta, that is the shape parameter. We have a few bounds on these parameters. Theta must be greater than or equal to x naught, and beta must be greater than zero. All right, so we want to use this knowledge of the Weibull distribution to our advantage. We'd like to be able to convert between different values of reliability. So this distribution formula for the Weibull distribution, this gives us a way of quantifying reliability at different levels of life. And 
Uh, that way we can convert uh, our design requirements to catalog data. So I should point out an additional important thing regarding reliability before we uh, finish up with the Weibull distribution. So what if we have multiple bearings? We need to think about what is the total reliability of the system. Not just what is the reliability of each bearing, but what is the probability of the system failing. So if we consider failure of the entire system consisting of just one of the bearings failing, then if we have more components in the system, more bearings, then that actually increases the probability of failure. So let's look at an example. Suppose we have a shaft that's supported by two bearings, bearings A and B. Here we have a gear and we have some torque that's uh, being provided through uh, another gear that's meshed with this gear C and that produces a bending moment. And we'd like to quantify what is the reliability of the whole system, at least if we're looking at just the bearings. So let's suppose that in this case the reliability of bearing A is equal to 90 percent. And the reliability of bearing B is equal to 95 percent. We'd like to know what is the total reliability of all of the bearings combined. Or in other words, what's the reliability of these two bearings together. So it turns out the total reliability is just a product of the reliability of bearing A and bearing B. So if we multiply those out, we find that the reliability is greater than 85 percent. So again, an important thing to point out here is if we have more moving components in the system, or more components that have stress applied to them, then there are more opportunities for failure. And if any one component fails, if that means total system failure, then the reliability of the system goes down as we add more and more components to the system. So it's desirable to develop simpler mechanical systems so that we can have greater reliability. And one important recent example of this is the development of electric vehicles. So with a conventional car, we have a very complicated internal combustion engine, very complicated transmission, lots of moving components uh, that are required to convert the energy and gasoline into rotational mechanical energy and get that that energy in an appropriate way to the wheels to propel the car forward. So that's a very complicated system but if we think about how an electric vehicle can be constructed, in some cases we even have electric vehicles that have uh, wheels that are driven directly by the motors and if that's the case, we don't even have any kind of gears or drivetrain or anything. And so by reducing the number of mechanical components in the system, we improve the reliability of the system. There's a lot less to go wrong. Okay, so let's suppose we want more reliability than 85.5%. Let's say we have a target total reliability of 95%. Let's see if that's possible to achieve. Suppose we plan on keeping bearing B and we want to change bearing A. We want to get a stronger bearing to improve the rel reliability of the total system. Let's see what, we, what reliability we would need at bearing A to achieve a reliability of 95%. So if the total reliability, 95%, is equal to reliability of A times the reliability of bearing B, which is 95%, what then does the reliability of A need to be? Well, unfortunately that's 95% divided by 95%, which is equal to 100%, which is clearly something we can't do. While we can get close to 100% reliability with bearings, we can't get exactly 100% reliability with bearings. So we can't achieve a total reliability of 95% by just changing 
bearing A. We could change both of them. They would both need to be uh, have a reliability of greater than 95% for a total reliability of 95%. So let's look at what we can do. Let's say if we are happy with something close to 95% now. So let's say we're happy with 94%. What does the reliability of A need to be in order to achieve that? So 94% divided by 95%, that is 98.95%. So while that may be a more expensive, stronger bearing, it's possible to achieve a total reliability of at least 94%. So in order to select these bearings, however, we can't just look up in the catalog and find a bearing that has a reliability of 95% or 94%, we have to go and use the Weibull distribution formula to convert this reliability to a reliability of 90% in the catalog and find out what the corresponding load and life ratings are.